Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. This afternoon we have an array of holiday recipes for you, including a couple of my own favorites. With me in the kitchen are Carolyn Peake from Williamstown and Marco Ayala and Lynn Jarvis, both from South Hero. It is our last In the Kitchen show for 2017. Hard to believe. Yes. <laughs> and we want to thank all of our loyal viewers, including Meg Dempsey from Morris Forks, New York, Elizabeth Kimball over in Hanover, New Hampshire, Donna Wiley up in Swanton, Candy Amston from Chester, Paul Therian from St. Johnsbury and Eleanor Newton from right here in Burlington. And be assured that all of your cards and notes are read and very much appreciated. And our congratulations go out to Patricia French of Northfield. Patricia is the winner of our free drawing for the cookbook 9 by 13, The Pan That Can. That was donated by Carolyn. Patricia, you'll be receiving your new cookbook in the mail any day now, just in time for Christmas. So to get us started, I'm, I'm going to start off with a couple of my favorite sort of holiday party recipes recipes and we're going to start off with the party buns. Now I made these with buffalo chicken but you could use pretty much anything and you start off with a 12 pack of pull apart uh, dinner rolls. These are wheat and you cut them horizontally and then uh, other ingredients you're going to need unsalted butter, some hot sauce, shredded rotisserie chicken, brie cheese, crumbled blue cheese, and thinly sliced celery and celery seeds. So you split the pack and then you broil the bread first. Then you open it up and you spread on your chicken mixture and you dot it with the different cheeses that you have. And then um, this is after you mix the chicken with the hot sauce. And then you uh, put the celery on top of that and then sprinkle with the celery seeds and bake in a 400 degree oven for 12 to 15 minutes. And it's wonderful because they're easy to pull apart. You know, if you're at a party, people can just grab one. Um, it's very kind of informal. And as I said, you could fill these with anything. Um, I would think like a roast beef, Reuben kind of thing would be kind of fun. Or even, you know, peanut butter and jelly if, if you're in a hurry. So that uh, is a real crowd pleaser. People seem to really like that one. My second is a honey pecan pie. And I know what you're thinking, Thanksgiving's over, and I did make this recipe for Thanksgiving and everyone loved it, but my kids weren't home. So I'm gonna make it again for Christmas. So it's your basic um, pie recipes that you would expect. Um, honey, white corn syrup, granulated sugar, light brown sugar, three eggs, four tablespoons of butter and some vanilla. Now you pour that into the pastry. I made my own crust, but of course, you know, you could buy a crust if you wanted to. And then you put the pecan halves on top and any kind of decoration that you want. I chose sort of a circular pattern because I thought that was pretty. And you bake at 375 for 40 to 50 minutes. And uh, you have a nice, nice pie to share with folks. And I'm just gonna move the sliders over just a little bit so you can see this pie and it comes out really well and I think it's pretty easy to make and you know a showstopper when you have a really pretty um, combination with the, the decorations of the nuts on top so those are my two recipes and I know Marco you have uh, some you're going to be sharing with us as well yes I also have some um, appetizers and party recipes as well perfect I'll let you get to it thank you well with the holidays fast approaching, um, the, you know, they can be a hectic time. So I decided to make three recipes to share with all of you, our viewers here at Across the Fence. And my, my theme was easy. So I'm gonna start with this appetizer. This is my viewer recipe. It came from Ron D'Aragon in Plattsburgh, New York. And thank you, Ron, for sending this recipe. It's so easy. It's kielbasa uh, with pineapple and they're marinated in teriyaki sauce and sweet chili sauce and then just assemble the little chunks of pineapple put the, um, a toothpick through them and put them in the oven and 20 minutes later you have an appetizer that everyone is going to love so thank you Ron for sending uh, this recipe and you know hopefully you at home will try it as well okay for my second recipe I basically look both, you know, through, the, uh, through my freezer to find out what I have. And it turns out that I had a ton of blueberries that I picked this summer, and I had a pork tenderloin. So I decided to make this um, pork tenderloin with a blueberry balsamic vinegar sauce. So you basically um, cook your meat, um, you know, the regular way, and then at the end, separately, you make a blueberry sauce that you can see here that um, takes some balsamic vinegar, honey, and uh, garlic. And just before serving, you put the sauce on top of your pork. And I can assure you, everyone is going to love this. It's very easy to make. Um, 
so you know you can impress all your guests and family really really fast so for my dessert i decided to also go the easy route so i made this sugar cookies that they kind of look like they will be a lot of work but i started with a um pre-mix you know a cookie sh sugar cookie pre-mix and then the icing is um, caramel coating that um, you put in the microwave and then you just put it over and put the icing on top and you have a cookie that looks really nice with very little effort. So, and, and you know, this will be really fun to do also with the kids. You can use icing or you could just do um, uh, sugar, decorating sugar. So you can decorate them, decorate them um, the way you, you will like. So these are my three recipes, and I know Carolyn has a ton of recipes here that look wonderful. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to try some of them. Well, I'm sure willing to let you try them okay. too. <laughs> well, I started out too with, as I, you know, I kind of looked at this and look at what was on the table, and I said, let's have a party, because we have a lot of the appetizer things, a lot of the things that can just be set around for people to, to munch on. I'm going to start with, my deviled eggs and these are bacon cheddar deviled eggs so you start out with your with your eggs and just take out the the yolks and mash them up and you put some crumbled bacon and some finely shredded cheddar cheese and some honey mustard and you mix those all together and put them back into the the empty egg whites and you've got a really nice easy meal or you know appetizer for people. Now my second appetizer, and you'll notice I have my my handy dandy crock pot, and this one is tangy meatballs. And it's I have the recipe here for the meatballs. If you don't want to do that, just buy some, and then you have the sauce made of ketchup, brown sugar, chopped onion, liquid smoke, and garlic powder. And I cook them in, I have them in the, the crock pot because that way they'll stay warm for your party or whatever. And I'm going to just put a few of those out on the plate. So you could use them as the meat part for a meal or you can have them just separate like that, just however you want to fix them. Now this next one, my husband was really interested in this because it's called triple mash with horseradish and breadcrumbs. And it's potatoes, parsnips, and turnips cooked together. And then you make, you put them into your serving dish and you make a crumb topping with butter and breadcrumbs. And then you mix the horseradish into the breadcrumbs and sprinkle that on top. So if you like something with, that's just a little bit spicy, that's going to be a very different and very good potato recipe for you. Now I have, I believe this is called maple layered brownies and it is from Virginia Lange of Sheldon, Vermont. And she says this is a nice dessert for Christmas get togethers. And I have that right over here. Um, actually, it can be made in a larger pan. I did this in a 9 by 13, and so they're taller than I think they're supposed to be. But it's very easy because it's just a German chocolate cake mix, and then some cream cheese and sugar and milk chocolate chips mixed into it, and it is good. I've had some of it, and I'm going to have some more, so that's a good way to to have a nice dessert for your Christmas dinner, or again, just to have around if you have company come in. Now my last one is double chocolate zucchini bread. And this can either be made in one large pan or in three small ones if you want to give it as gifts. It is a chocolate, um, chocolate bread, quick bread, and then it has chocolate chips in it. And I used mini chips because these were small and so you could gift some as gifts, or you could just, again, have small pieces out for your friends and neighbors when they come in to have a party with you. So, Lynn, your turn. Thank you very much, <laughs> and Merry Christmas to you and Howard. Yes, and to you as well. Thank you very much. Well, I'm going to begin with a recipe that you're going to enjoy. It's my honey 
barbecued chicken, and here you see it right here. Now this could be great for uh, any holiday gathering, or while you're watching some of those many football games that are coming up between now and the end of the year, it's delicious and easy to make. First, you rub the chicken with some brown sugar, garlic powder, and cinnamon, and then chill it in the refrigerator. And when it's cold uh, and you're ready to cook it, you brush it with a mixture of honey, ketchup, mustard, and a little soy sauce, and bake. Uh, it's in the oven at uh, 350 for about three, uh, uh, 30 minutes. Now, just before serving, we're going to pour some of our extra honey barbecue sauce over the top. Now, just take a look at this. This is so yummy and so good. And I wish you were all here to sample this along with us. And we're going to enjoy this just as soon as the show is over. Honey barbecued chicken. Now, to go with our chicken, I have a macaroni and cheese. It's right here and it's made in the slow cooker. It's called a three cheese macaroni, and Carolyn, you'll be interested in this. So into the slow cooker goes some macaroni. It's pre-cooked, a little evaporated milk, your cheeses, some chopped uh, green peppers that you can see, and some onion. So voila, in three hours, you have this delicious mac and cheese ready to go. Delicious, and I know you'll enjoy it very much. Now, you regular viewers know that on every holiday show, I make up a platter of my favorite Christmas cookies to show you, and here it is. Uh, first, I have these cranberry date bars. Now, also in here, there's some um, caramel, and you can see it's covered with the caramel, so they're very easy to make, along with the uh, cranberries and dates and caramel, there's also some sugar in here, flour, oatmeal, and walnuts. Uh, wonderful flavor combination. It's a great for family, school, and church get-togethers. Now let me spin it around a little bit because my next cookie recipe is right here. It's a layered eggnog blondie. Now doesn't that look good? Now over a crust that's made with vanilla wafers goes a mix of cream cheese, powdered sugar, and eggnog. And then you bake at 325 for about 30 minutes on it. Then cool it on a wire rack. And just before serving, put on a little dollop of whipped cream that you've covered with Christmas sprinkles. These are just delicious. And I really enjoy this time of year because we get to cook with eggnog and drink eggnog. There's so many different flavors in the stores these days. Now, my last recipe is right here, my last cookie recipes and it's this white chocolate almond dipped cookies. Now, don't they look good? <clears throat> the cookies are made with butter, flour, confectionery sugar, and the special surprise is chopped apricots that you'll find in here. Bake at 350 for about 15 minutes, and when cool, dip in uh, that hot white chocolate that you've melted in it. As you can see, it makes a little coating there, and then Dip that chocolate right into your almonds and it sticks. They stick right to the cookie. And this makes up about three dozen so you can serve some uh, or give some to family and friends. So a very nice little cookie. Uh, I really enjoy it. Now we're moving on to the best recipe of the afternoon. I, or my best recipe. <laughs> okay, it's the cherry Christmas wreath. And just take a look at this. Simple to make with just three ingredients. First, you bake your chocolate cake in a 10 inch tube pan and cut it in half. Then you frost it with a mixture of uh, almond extract and cinnamon and it's all in a cream cheese frosting and if you want to get fancy you can take a tube and do a little decorating and top with cherry pie filling and Judy this makes two cakes one for family or friends and I'm going to give this one to you for all the good work you do here and across the fence. Thank you so much. What a great festive way to celebrate. Well as always we have a couple of different ways to get all of these recipes that we showed you today. You can get them online from the Across the Fence website. Go to uvm.edu slash extension and click on the link to Across the Fence. You'll find the recipes on the left-handed side of the web page. To get the recipes by mail send two dollars in a stamp self-addressed business size envelope 
to Holiday Recipes, Box 188, South Hero, Vermont, 05486. And please remember, if you are ordering the recipes, to include $2 and a stamped self-addressed envelope. The address again is Holiday Recipes, Box 188 in South Hero. We'll leave the address on the screen while I mention that our next edition of In the Kitchen with Across the Fence will feature favorite recipes for 2018, and that's going to air on Thursday, January 4th. From all of us here at WCAX and Across the Fence, best wishes to all of you for a fun and safe holiday season. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.